Hey, it's Luxury Travel Docs here today, and let me welcome you to the maiden voyage of P&O's newest ship, the Arvia. We arrived today in Southampton, and let me just tell you, you cannot miss this ship. It is massive, and it has the signature P&O Cruises Union Jack painting on the side. It has 18 decks and a capacity of about 6,000. So because of this size, it's going to take a little bit of time for us to fully explore the ship. But what I wanted to do today, of course, is welcome you. Well, the maiden voyage was a school holiday, so there were lots of tots, children, and teens on board. Because of this, we had a unique opportunity to check out lots of neat things for your young ones and, of course, for the whole family. So thanks for joining us, and in this video we'll go over some of the rooms that we think are best for families, really coming in at different price points. We'll give you tips to make sure your young ones are comfortable, safe, and secure. Then we'll go over some of the restaurants that we think are best for traveling with young ones. We'll give you some sample menus and some tips. Next we'll give you some of the best family activities, as well as some tips on how to find those. And last, we'll look at some of the kids' clubs, as well as some of the newest children's activities that were added to Arvia. So let's get to it. And just a quick reminder that all profits from this channel are donated to charity. Please help us help others by giving us a thumbs up or subscribing to our channel. Your support makes a difference. We toured four types of cabins on Arvia, and there are really only three types of cabins that we feel are best for families traveling together. A deluxe balcony cabin, an inside cabin for up to three or four passengers, as well as a conservatory mini suite. First, let's look at the deluxe balcony cabin. We are going to look at room 15, 432, which is located midship on deck 15. This is a deluxe balcony cabin with a sofa bed and sleeps three persons. This is a connecting room to room 15434, which might be useful for larger families traveling together. The balcony is large and can fit two chairs and a table easily. There is lots of privacy from the neighboring cabins, cabins above and below you, and there is an unobstructed view. The beds in this room are configured as two twin beds, but the beds can be pushed together to form a bed that is slightly larger than a queen size bed. There are two movable bed stands that have shelves only and no drawers. There are outlets located beside each of the beds with a USB outlet in the bottom of each lamp. In this configuration on the Arvia, the beds are located near the balcony door and the sofa itself is located closer to the bathroom. There is a large television opposite the sofa and beds with a few cabinets underneath with very shallow shelves. Beside the television is a desk with two more cabinets. On the right side are some slightly deeper shelves and on the left side is a small refrigerator. The desk has a chair and a kettle with a supply of tea and coffee, and there are additional outlets and some small shelves located there. The sofa converts into a bed for one, and I'll show you that in a second. It has a movable table with some small shelves. The wardrobe is located beside that. On the right side, there are those darn anti-theft hangers, and there is a full-length mirror outside. There is another single wardrobe with a smaller or shorter closet for jackets and shirts with a safe inside. The safe itself can probably fit some smaller items and a tablet and maybe a smaller laptop. You can phone your cabin steward to make up the bed for you in the evenings, but I want to show you how it works. There is a small tab that you can pull and the base of the sofa will rotate over, revealing the bed. On the bed are located a duvet, and underneath the bed, inside the couch, are two pillows for use when this is operating as a bed. If you use this sofa bed for a child, make sure that you ask your room steward for guardrails to help prevent them from falling out of the sofa bed at night. Deluxe balcony rooms also have an option for a fourth passenger. 
The fourth passenger will sleep in a Pullman bed that descends from the ceiling. This is what the bed looks like when it's fully made up. It does have a guardrail and a ladder to make access into it and out of it easy. You can ask your cabin steward to leave the beds made up during the day so that they are convenient for naps. If you don't want this, the cabin steward will put the beds away during the day and make them up again around 6 to 7 p.m. As we head into the bathroom, you will love the beautiful wooden floor located in there with a nice shower door. There is a removable nozzle for those who might have mobility issues with a retractable clothesline in the shower. There's plenty of shelf space and towel racks for your use. Products are provided by White Company Goods with a pump bottle of hand wash by the sink and pump bottles of shampoo and body wash in the shower. This is a connecting room with the connecting door located near the cabin door with two small lower hooks located by the door. If you're somebody like us who likes magnetic hooks, you might want to bring those with you. The only other general option that we would like to point out is that shower chairs are available for those who may have mobility issues. A great budget cabin for families is a standard inside cabin for up to four passengers. This is cabin 15727 and this is located aft on the 15th floor. This is a cabin that is intended for up to four persons because the couch folds out into a bunk bed and we're going to show you at the end of this video how that bunk bed actually works. My first impressions are that this cabin is lovely. It's decorated with warm tones and blue highlights. The bed is a standard size like you're going to find on most cruise ships and essentially this is two twin beds that can be either positioned separately in the room or pushed together where they make a bed that's just a little bit larger than a queen size bed. There's outlets present on the wall with a USB port in the bottom of each lamp. On one side of the bed is a very small recessed shelf. That recessed shelf is part of a small cabinet with a number of shelves that are inside. Among those shelves is a small safe that is large enough for you to place a laptop, a tablet, and many other things. Once in the bathroom, you'll find that there are adequate towel bars, hooks, and shelves to hold most of your necessities. Pump bottles of hand wash, shampoo, and body wash by White Company Goods are provided. And if you need conditioner or body lotion, ask your steward. One item that is very important for most of us is that there is a retractable clothes hanger in the shower. There really aren't any grab bars in this bathroom, which is something that's important for mobility challenged passengers. Near the door are four permanent hooks. This is something that's very useful for you to hang jackets or hats. And if you're somebody like us who likes to take magnetic hooks, you may not need them. Opposite these hooks is a small wardrobe. This is long enough for you to hang most of your long gowns, dresses, and slacks. On the top, there is a small shelf that's occupied by your life vest, and on the bottom you can store some shoes. Inside are those darn anti-theft hangers, and on the outside is a full-length mirror. As promised, we'll show you how to operate the additional beds in the room. Go to the sofa, remove the pillows, and then there is a small handle at the base of the back of the couch. Here, just tug on it, and sometimes it'll take a couple of tugs, but the back of the couch will hinge out into an extra bed, giving you two bunk beds. If you need railing for any children, you should ask your steward. Then just to recess it back into a couch, you just push on it and it'll form back into a couch. And if you have any difficulty with this, you can ask your cabin steward to help you. The last type of cabin that we suggest for families traveling together are conservatory mini suites. 
These cabins are generally located on decks eight or nine. And the unique features of these cabins are that there is a separate seating area with a sofa, chair, and table. Through a sliding glass door, there is additional space with the seating that can become part of the cabin or the balcony, depending on your desire. These do have the additional sofa bed as well as the Pullman bed to accommodate three or four passengers. The downside to these rooms are that the balcony is usually located along the promenade deck. And the possible lack of privacy as well as the noise is something that may be bothersome to some passengers. All rooms with balcony doors have elevated locks for safety to prevent your young ones from wandering onto the balcony unattended. If you're someone who likes to bring magnetic hooks or over the door hangers for your cabins, these are very good options when traveling with families. So these can be great ways to organize your family's items allow children to find their items easily, and reduce clutter in an already cramped cabin. Magnetic hooks are also very useful for hanging barriers to help prevent light from waking up your children or to give you some privacy between your children and your own bed. Shower curtains work really well for this. There are guardrails that can be attached to the upper berth when it is pulled down. Make sure you ask your room steward for these. And just like we showed you earlier, make sure that you ask your room steward for guardrails for the lower berth, especially if a small child is sleeping there. You can ask for guardrails for the upper berth as well. Most Dexwood cabins have laundry facilities with a large number of washers and dryers as well as irons available. If the washers and dryers are occupied on your floor, you should consider going to one of the floors above or below you. The machines are free of charge, but you do need to bring your own detergent and dryer sheets if you use them. Laundry supplies were sometimes difficult to come by in the shops on board. Today I would like to go over the Horizon Restaurant, which is a buffet restaurant on Arvia. This is the place to go for quick breakfasts and lunches or informal dinners and snacks outside of mealtimes. It's located on the Lido deck between the Sky Dome Pool and the Infinity Pool. And for that reason, it's a great place to go when you don't want to be away from the pool for too long. Let's start with our video walkthrough of the Horizon Restaurant. Always remember to washi-washi before you enter any buffet to reduce the risk of transmission of germs and viruses. One of the positives of the food at the Horizon restaurant was that allergens were clearly marked for every option available at the buffet. Sample menus were available on the My Holiday app, which you would use while on board Arvia. But overall, these really were a poor reflection of what was available. The Horizon Buffet is an excellent place to take children because there is a variety of food offered and the relaxed atmosphere makes it easy for children. Just be aware that it can get pretty crowded up there with individuals not only obtaining their food, but also getting their drinks as well. If you are up in the Horizon Buffet with a pram or carrying many things, make sure that you ask somebody to help you carry your tray to your table. Horizon Buffet also has children's tea every day at five o'clock. This is a great way to keep your children on schedule or get them to have their meal before you head out for the evening. If you take your children to dinner with you, Every restaurant has a children's menu. They also have children's size cutlery if you need it. Another suggestion is to ask your server to bring your children's meals out early so that they have time to cool before the entire family eats at once. Another family favorite is the Sixth Street Diner, modeled after an American diner. This is located on deck six midship. The fun decor, the jukebox, and the menu are sure to please children. Sixth Street Diner serves comfort food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner.
Of course, children are welcome in any of the included and not included restaurants, such as the Olive Grove, the Meridian and Zenith restaurants, Sindhu, Green & Co, and even Epicurean. But make sure that you ask for the children's menu and even the children's cutlery at any restaurant that you go to if they're not going to order off the regular menu. A great relaxed place for the entire family to eat is Taste 360. And we really recommend this for families because they serve pizzas, burgers, hot dogs, and other street food. There were lots of groups of children enjoying Taste 360 on our cruise. We really enjoyed visiting Sundays, which is by the Laguna Bar on deck 16. The gelato was perfect for an after dinner treat or something cool on a hot day. Ripples, located midship on Deck 8, is another great place to grab some cool refreshments or gelato. Items in Ripples are a la carte and do incur an extra charge. There are lots more activities for the kids and for those who are also young at heart. Look for activities appropriate for the entire family in the Horizon Daily. Up on Deck 18 is a great outdoor chess game. There's also some golfing nets aft on Deck 18. Mission Control is located on Deck 6, midship. It's an escape room at sea. Some people just call it immersive theater. You'll be part of a submarine crew where you'll be asked to solve puzzles and problem solve to save the ship. The cost is 20 pounds per adult and 10 pounds per child. Opposite Anderson's Bar is the Ocean Studios. This is a four screen cinema and it really is reminiscent of cinemas on land. There were vending machines available for you to get drinks during your movie. You would have to buy snacks like popcorn at the stores on board. was a rotating list of movies that were available every day at various times throughout the day. Unlike other P&O cruise ships, there are only three cinemas that operate on Arvia. That is to allow space for the mission control that we just talked about. Of course, we wouldn't be completing our mission if we didn't make any kind of note of the gym. The gym does welcome teenagers, and children from the age of 14 to 16 are able to use the gym if they are accompanied by somebody 18 years and over. Also, children 16 and over can use the weights, but children age 14 to 16 can only use aerobic equipment.
It's Luxury Travel Docs here, and as you know, we love to promote meaningful and healthy travel. And fortunately, on P&O Cruises' newest ship, the RVO, they do have this lovely ropes course, which I was able to do today, and it is complimentary. And what a great opportunity for you to get outside, enjoy some sunlight, and use your strength and agility and problem-solving capabilities to make it through an aerial ropes course. The ropes course on P&O Cruises RVA is called Altitude and it is, again, it's complimentary. There are times of day and certain days it is open such as sea days and gosh, I did it uh, while we were in port, but how challenging would it be to be doing this while you're at sea with the ship moving and maybe a little bit of wind. I'm sure that they are not going to put you in an unsafe situation, but this is just a great opportunity to be able to do this at sea. That's Sam up there, he's your help up on the ropes course and he is awesome. He came out of nowhere to save me more than once. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I just did the ropes course here on P&O Cruises, maiden voyage of the Arvia and it was a lot of fun. I have done these before and let me tell you that these guys are awesome. They have active help up there on the course, which uh, he scared me, he came out of nowhere, but it was very, very <laughs> helpful to me. And I highly recommend that you do this. And by the way, back to deck 19, there is altitude mini golf. And this is a great family activity to enjoy sea views, the warm breeze, and some sun. This is included in the price of your cruise. As with any of the aft bars, the sound of the wake is very soothing. And of course, the sunsets can be spectacular. Other bars that are located aft are the Infinity Pool and Bar on deck 16, and the Panorama Pool and Bar on deck 18. Children are allowed in any outdoor pool or bathing area except for the retreat. The Beachcomber Bar and Pool is located on deck 18 forward. This area offers you a lot of space to relax either in the sun or the shade. Then of course there is the Sky Dome. Located on deck 16, this has a retractable roof. There are various places around the Sky Dome to grab a drink or food. Then of course during the day and at night, this turns into a wonderful entertainment venue. You'll find many whirlpools on Arvia 
And we really love these infinity whirlpools that were located on deck 18. You must be 18 years or older to use the retreat. The clubhouse is a great place to go dancing with the entire family, including your children. We saw many children in the clubhouse during our cruise. In fact, children are allowed in all bars except for the Limelight Club, which is for 18 and over only. If you decide to head out for a night on the ship, you can utilize the Night Nursery, which is for ages six months to four years of age. It operates until 2 a.m. and your children must be asleep to enter. On deck 18 is Splash Valley, and this is an interactive pool for very small children. The Reef is an indoor and outdoor activity center for children of all ages. Pre-registration is required. Since February of 2023, Wallace and Gromit and Shaun the Sheep are on board and perform a character-led experience in the Sky Dome. The scene is located forward on Deck 6, away from the other children's clubs. It is for ages 13 to 17. Inside they'll find other teens, music, games, and even more. Always remember to make meaningful and healthy travel happen. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time from the maiden voyage of PO's newest ship, the Arvia.